In functional analysis, a branch of mathematics, the Borel functional calculus is a functional calculus that is, an assignment of operators from commutative algebras to functions defined on their spectra, which has particularly broad scope. Thus for instance if T is an operator, applying the squaring function S S2 to T yields the operator T2. Using the functional calculus for larger classes of functions, we can for example define rigorously the square root of the negative Laplacian operator minus delta or the exponential E I T delta displaystyle E caret it delta the scope here means the kind of function of an operator which is allowed. The Borel functional calculus is more general than the continuous functional calculus, and has a different focus from the holomorphic functional calculus. More precisely, the Borel functional calculus allows us to apply an arbitrary Borel function to a self-adjoint operator, in a way which generalizes applying a polynomial function. <laughs> <laughs> Motivation If T is a self-adjoint operator on a finite-dimensional inner product space H, then H has an orthonormal basis E1 E consisting of eigenvectors of T, that is T E K equals lambda K E K one K display style T underscore K equals lambda underscore K E underscore K Q quad one L E Q K L E Q L. Thus, for any positive integer n, T n E K equals lambda k n e k display style t caret n e underscore k equals lambda underscore k caret n e underscore k if only polynomials in t are considered then one arrives at the holomorphic functional calculus are more general functions of T possible? Yes, given a Borel function H, one can define an operator H T by specifying its behavior on the basis H T E K equals H lambda K E K display style H T E underscore K equals H lambda underscore K E underscore K in general any self-adjoint operator T is unitarily equivalent to a multiplication operator this means that for many purposes T can be considered as an operator T Psi x equals f x psi x display style t psi x equals f x psi x acting on L two of some measure space. The domain of T consists of those functions for which the above expression is in L2. In this case, one can define analogously H T psi x equals H 
f x psi x display style h t psi x equals h circ f x psi x for many technical purposes the preceding formulation is good enough However, it is desirable to formulate the functional calculus in a way in which it is clear that it does not depend on the particular representation of T as a multiplication operator. This we do in the next section. The bounded functional calculus Formally, the bounded Borel functional calculus of a self-adjoint operator T on Hilbert space H is a mapping defined on the space of bounded complex-valued Borel functions f on the real line π t l infinity r c b H F F T display style begin cases pi underscore T L caret in a T math B R math B C to math call B math call H F mapsto F T end cases such that the following conditions hold Pi t is an involution preserving in unit preserving homomorphism from the ring of complex valued bounded measurable functions on R. If she is an element of H, then nu she e pi t one e she she display style new underscore she e mapsto langle pi underscore t math bf one underscore e she she wrangle is a countably additive measure on the Borel sets of R in the above formula 1 e denotes the indicator function of e these measures nx are called the spectral measures of t if eta denotes the mapping z z on c then pi t eta plus i minus 1 equals T plus I minus one display style pi underscore T left eta plus I carrot minus one right equals T plus I carrot minus one theorem any self-adjoint operator T has a unique Borel functional calculus, this defines the functional calculus for bounded functions applied to possibly unbounded self-adjoint operators. Using the bounded functional calculus, one can prove part of the Stone's theorem on one-parameter unitary groups. Theorem, if A is a self-adjoint operator, then U T equals E I T A T element of R displaystyle U underscore T equals E carrot Ita Q quad T in Math B R is a one-parameter strongly continuous unitary group whose infinitesimal generator is Ia. As an application, we consider the Schrödinger equation, or equivalently, the dynamics of a quantum mechanical system. 
In non-relativistic quantum mechanics, the Hamiltonian operator H models the total energy observable of a quantum mechanical system S. The unitary group generated by IH corresponds to the time evolution of S. We can also use the Borel functional calculus to abstractly solve some linear initial value problems such as the heat equation, or Maxwell's equations. <laughs> <laughs> Existence of a functional calculus The existence of a mapping with the properties of a functional calculus requires proof. For the case of a bounded self-adjoint operator T, the existence of a Borel functional calculus can be shown in an elementary way as follows. First pass from polynomial to continuous functional calculus by using the Stone-Weierstrass theorem. The crucial fact here is that, for a bounded self-adjoint operator T and a polynomial P P T equals sup lambda element of sigma T P lambda Display style p t equals sub underscore lambda in sigma t p lambda. Consequently, the mapping p p t display style p maps to p t is an isometry and a densely defined homomorphism on the ring of polynomial functions. Extending by continuity defines f t for a continuous function f on the spectrum of t. The Riesz-Markov theorem then allows us to pass from integration on continuous functions to spectral measures, and this is the Borel functional calculus. Alternatively, the continuous calculus can be obtained via the Gelfand transform in the context of commutative Banach algebras. Extending to measurable functions is achieved by applying Riesz Markov, as above. In this formulation, T can be a normal operator. Given an operator T, the range of the continuous functional calculus H H T is the abelian C asterisk algebra C T generated by T. The Borel functional calculus has a larger range, that is the closure of C T in the weak operator topology, a still abelian von Neumann algebra. The general functional calculus We can also define the functional calculus for not necessarily bounded Borel functions H, the result is an operator which in general fails to be bounded. Using the multiplication by a function f model of a self-adjoint operator given by the spectral theorem, this is multiplication by the composition of H with f. Theorem. Let T be a self-adjoint operator on H, H a real-valued Borel function on R. There is a unique operator S such that Dom S equals she element of h h element of l nu she 2 r Display style operator name dom s equals left she in h h in l underscore new underscore she caret two math b r right s she she equals r h t 
D new she T four she element of Dom s display style langle s she she wrangle equals int underscore math b r h t d new underscore she t quad m box for quad she in operator name dom s the operator s of the previous theorem is denoted h t more generally, a Borel functional calculus also exists for bounded normal operators. Topic: <inaudible> Resolution of the identity. Let T be a self-adjoint operator. If E is a Borel subset of R, and 1 E is the indicator function of E, then 1 E T is a self-adjoint projection on H then mapping Omega E 1 E T Display style Omega E mapsto math BF 1 underscore E T is a projection valued measure called the resolution of the identity for the self adjoint operator T. The measure of R with respect to ω is the identity operator on H. In other words, the identity operator can be expressed as the spectral integral I equals 1 D ω Display style text style i equals int one d omega. Sometimes the term resolution of the identity is also used to describe this representation of the identity operator as a spectral integral. In the case of a discrete measure, in particular when h is finite dimensional, i equals 1 d omega display style text style i equals int 1 d omega can be written as i equals i i i display style i equals sum underscore i left i right wrangle left langle i right in the dirac notation where each i display style i wrangle is a normalized eigenvector of t the set i display style i wrangle is an orthonormal basis of H. In physics literature, using the above as heuristic, one passes to the case when the spectral measure is no longer discrete and write the resolution of identity as I equals D I I Display style i equals int d i wrangle langle i and speak of a continuous basis or continuum of basis states i display style i wrangle mathematically unless rigorous justifications are given this expression is purely formal <laughs>